uh, Mark Hanna. I'm the operations lead for uh, JF Pass JCTD, which is the Joint Force Advanced Security System Joint Concept Technology Demonstration. Uh, our mission is to uh, demonstrate, assess, and transition an advanced Joint Force Protection capability. And we are part of a uh, Joint Force team of a lot of organizations uh, that are trying to achieve that. Now, uh, this is our Base Defense Operations Center. Uh, basically, it consists of a battle captain station and any number of operator stations. Now, each one of these stations is capable of operating all or any part of the JFPS system because we've integrated uh, about 35 different force protection technologies that consist of uh, a lot of different sensors, uh, unattended ground sensors, radars, fence sensors, uh, gunfire detection sensors, chemical hazard and radiological hazard sensors, cameras, unmanned ground vehicles. Uh, we also have robotic machine guns, basically machine guns mounted on tripods that can be fired from inside the VDOC. Uh, and each one of these teams is assigned uh, whatever number of systems that he needs to defend his sector. And again, that's scalable depending on uh, what the threat is, what the terrain is, how, how, how uh, large the base is, etc. Its goal is to demonstrate what is gained through a command and control architecture that uses a standard interface protocol, an ICD-0100. Through that interface protocol, we're able to rapidly integrate numerous disparate systems. And instead of them being channeled in multiple different directions, it all comes into a common server or hard drive so that we can share that data amongst all the systems. But that's only part of it. Once you have that data integrated, the more important part is how does it work together as a team and how do we automate functions, thereby reducing workload on the operator and also fuse data to reduce nuisance alarms, but also redundant detections by multiple systems to where we declutter the cop. Now that provides us with two things. One, a simpler, more user-friendly common operating picture for the battle captain so that he can make better decisions with a faster decision cycle through greater situational understanding. The second part is by using this common interface protocol, we're, we're using commercially available hardware, thereby saving the government money. By having this, this one GUI, this one cop that the battle captain trains on, he only has to learn one presentation for the information. Instead of having, in, in this case, nearly 39 GUIs he would have need to learn and familiarize himself with, uh, that could mean you need 39 monitors, possibly, if you're trying to watch them all at once. Um, it, it's very difficult and tedious to try to watch, manage, and learn that many things. And what JVC2S and Cohesion, what the JFS solution has created here, is a way of combining that information from all those diverse systems together and present it in one unified, full-length presentation. Our, our, our COP, the true common operational picture here, um, what was actually uh, achieved and, and that's one of the big payoffs for the battle captain and the operators. My name is Master Sergeant, uh, it's an E-7 Michael White. I'm from uh, stationed at Lackland Air Force Base at the Air Force Security Forces Center. Uh, I'm the manager of Force Protection Innovations and uh, Future Concepts out of the Requirements Division of, uh, of that unit. JF Pass absolutely reduces the burden um, it, it, what it does is it, it integrates all of those things together and uh, enables you to control them all from one common operating picture. And turn on your sectors. And that reduces the time for the operator. Uh, it reduces a manpower footprint because one or two operators can do now the jobs of an entire tactical operations center for, for intents and purposes. Um, so I think it, it does compare but it far out surpasses uh, uh, that. And, and how we know that is we use it with the fusion engine on uh, and we see how rapidly and, uh, it can respond to and how flexible it, it is to react to uh, uh, any of the threats that are out there, enabling us to, to defeat it uh, quite possibly. Uh, and then we turn the fusion engine off. <laughs> and we go back to, if you will, old school type of reacting uh, manually to things and it makes a, uh, quite a difference and quite more difficult. Without automation and fusion, what you would end up with is a very cluttered, complicated vision of what's going on. This is video from Site A17 out on the coast. And with the fusion disabled, we're picking up numerous targets from wave action 
uh, at the shore, along with uh, targets from a few people in the area. If a Zodiac, a boat, was coming in and landing on the coast and people were coming out, now they got to try to distinguish one target from the, this whole cloud of clutter that's going on for them. It basically make it uh, impossible for them to tell until something is up well into the threat zone. This is the first week that we're here during Operational Demo 1. One of our requirements is to develop an operator training package, a POI, Program of Instruction. This is our first beta version of that operator training. They are here for five days. They are representing the Navy, the Air Force, and the Army. We will later on have members of the Marine Corps also come in to go through this training. This gives us a snapshot of how focused and how well we prepared this beta version of the training. So as we progress to a program or record, we can refine that training package and that POI. And we also have to develop training packages for maintenance training and also for administrator training. They'll go through this for five days and then we'll begin the actual operations and all the operations which will be evaluated will be done by the operators, not by contractors and not by the developers of the program itself. You're able to look at all this stuff in one big common op operating picture, employ and integrate everything together and uh, it, their overlapping capabilities uh, improves the whole situation for the warfighter. If we go to a facility and stand up JF Pass, we can bring in all the legacy equipment and as opposed to having two common operating pictures, the old equipment that was on the facility and the JF Pass, no, we merge all of it together onto one set of controls, one common operating picture. This is sort of like what Blue Force Tracker I think always should have been. Um, instantaneously reactive, you see the enemy, you can, you can do things other than just seeing situational icons, being able to pass messages. This enables you to actually quite possibly turn a fixed installation into an actual uh, fighting apparatus. We have shown the realm of the possible. The possible is we can integrate all those systems into a single cop that can then be shared throughout the FOB, throughout the base, and potentially off the base to another base, all as one single C2 system. 